everyone. Um, welcome back. Uh, I've been reviewing one of the last recordings. Um, first of all, I can't understand how some people might get annoyed at me eating during a video, but I, I'm me. I'm, I'm going to do my thing, especially if I'm just watching something. If I'm playing a game, I might not, because it might, because it requires too much attention with my hands. But if I'm just watching something, there's a good chance I'll be eating something at some point during that, especially something as long as this. So, um, but secondly, I think this is a pretty good balance on the audio. It seems to be working out pretty well this way. About 50% on YouTube, this set like this here, and then you know, seems seems to work pretty well. So uh, let's continue. It seems as if the defense has no further objections. In that case, uh, I think it's about time for me to pass my verdict. Any closing remarks, Prince Blue Blood? I warned you, human attorney. You should have saved yourself from putting on this pathetic display when you had the chance. Your Honor, please proceed. No, I can't let Come it on, Phoenix. Like this. Very well. This court finds the defendant, Coco Pamel. Objection. Objection. Come on. Wait. Who was that? It's Twilight. It was me, Your Honor. Twilight? Prosecutor Blue Blood, I want you to clarify something for me. Prince Blue Blood. Blue Blood. <laughs> you said Coco saw the special fabric on the night of the murder, and that's what prompted her to go through with her plan to kill Overall. Excuse me? You are to address me as... Bitch! That what you're claiming I'm a princess not? too! Shut up! Uh, yes, that is what I am claiming! What of it? Can you please show us the fabric you're talking about? Surely you must have seen it for yourselves. It was left sitting in the dressing room. But if you insist on seeing it again, I had it brought into court today. Here it is. Are you happy? Huh. Just as I had thought. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? I believe Mr. Wright can answer that for me. <sighs> of course. Thanks, Twilight. What she means, Prince Blue Blood, is that yeah. the fabric he presented to the court is not the special fabric that overall made. What? No, it has to be. Playwright confirmed it when we asked him. This fabric is what Overall was commissioned to make for the theater. Now let me rephrase my response. True, that is indeed the special fabric Overall was working on for the theater that night. However, the fabric that you presented is currently incomplete! What? <laughs> Blue blood. What is the meaning of this? Uh, uh, I find it hard to believe that the defendant would have murdered the victim for a roll of incomplete fabric. Th then th that's it. She must not have known it was incomplete. Right. How is that possible? She and the victim not only worked together, but they lived together. There's no way she wouldn't have known what the fabric was supposed to look like. Uh, well, maybe she thought she could finish the fabric on her own. Okay, let's test that theory then, shall we? Mr. Playwright. Y yes? I recall you said something in your testimony earlier regarding the fabric overall was working on that night. He came on stage briefly to discuss something with me. And then he left right before the intermission ended. He said he and his assistant had to start working on coating a new sheet of fabric and paint. If you don't mind me asking, what exactly was this paint? Fluorescent paint. Yeah. The fabric was supposed to be covered in both that paint and a touch of glitter. And what does that prove? This Pamel would have known that. You said so yourself. It's not about whether or not she would have known about it, but whether or not she could gain access to it. What do you mean? She was going to inherit all of Overall's assets. The fluorescent paint and glitter would have been included in that as well. True. She would have inherited whatever Overall had left. 
What about after she ran out? She goes down to the hardware what? store and buys some more. This fabric was meant to be used in the next play at Bridal Way Theater. Naturally, that means Coco would have had to make more if she intended on using it in the contest. And making more fabric means buying more paint. And how is that an issue? She would have inherited all of Overall's money. He's making a Why point, Phoenix. Am I just nothing. stupid? Not this paint, I'm afraid. Explain yourself. Yesterday, when we were investigating the theater, Rarity, one of the most fashion-forward ponies in Equestria, had a few things to say about this fluorescent paint. Fluorescent paint? Such a thing exists? Where can I get this paint? Yes, it's at Walmart. It might help with my business. I still wonder where he got this paint. It must have been awfully expensive. Especially since he used so much of it. If Rarity hadn't even heard of the paint, let alone considered it to be cheap, then I doubt this paint is anywhere near as accessible or affordable as regular paint. Even if Coco were able to find and buy some, do you really think she'd be able to do so before the contest deadline? Or spend that much of her newly earned money on a chance that the fabric would be good enough to win a contest? If she lost, She'd have a very hard time making that money back. Objection! If you look at the fabric by itself, it's already relatively nice to look at. Even without all the bells and whistles the victim added to it, she could have just entered the base fabric itself into no, the contest. No, she couldn't. Maybe so. But you can't deny that this evidence blows a hole in your theory that Coco killed overall for this fabric. Mr. Wright has a point, Prince Blueblood. The motive you proposed isn't very persuasive given this new information. Do you have anything else against the defendant that proves she committed Okay, bring out your other evidence. <laughs> of course, Your Honor. I have yet to produce the most damaging piece of evidence to this court. Is that so? <clears throat> so, we're finally going to see what he was talking about earlier. Indeed, Your Honor. And I'll have Playwright explain what I mean. Huh? M me Witness, when you found Miss Pamel on the catwalk that night, did you notice anything odd about her? Well, as I said earlier, she seemed rather dazed. And what about her hooves? Did you notice anything in particular about them? Uh -huh. Oh, that's right! What is it, Witness? Miss Pamel's four hooves. When I discovered her on top of the catwalk, they were covered in glitter. What? They were working on the fabric together. The defendant's four hooves were covered in glitter? <laughs> what does this mean? Allow me to explain, Your Honor. Recall that Miss Pamel and Mr. Concept were working yes. in the dressing room prior to the crime. During the course of their work, the defendant must have gotten her hooves covered in glitter. Oh! So the glitter marks on the fabric roll... Precisely, Your Honor. They were left the victim would have also gotten it all over his hooves. She used it to hit the victim. No. This That's really be. not that damning. And now the prosecution would like to submit our final piece of evidence. The noose. The noose itself? The court is no doubt aware of the fact that this is the noose used to hang the victim to death. Though I have yet to reveal a crucial detail concerning this noose. We have discovered that, just like the fabric roll, there are traces of glitter on it. D traces of glitter? Considering that there is only one conscious pony on the catwalk that could have committed the crime, the only logical inference is that Miss Pamel is the culprit. But knowing that she had glitter left on her hooves, and that there was glitter on both the fabric roll and the noose, it has become crystal clear that Miss Pamel was the one who knocked the victim out wrapped the noose around his neck and killed him. Please, please don't do that smug expression again, Blue Blood. That I will to be harm you if you do. Evidence. The one who touched the rope was Miss Pamel I don't herself. know that. Of course. There's no other way it could be any pony else. I presume a guilty verdict is in order, Your Honor? It would seem that way. 
okay. Objection! But what about the motive? It's unlikely that Coco would have killed for a fabric that she had no reliable way of reproducing. You're still obsessing over that? Yeah. Perhaps she merely killed him for his other designs, or maybe just his money. The defendant has a laundry list of potential motives, attorney. That fact doesn't disappear by virtue of you pointing out that the completed version of the fabric was not at the theater that night, you know. <gasps> Besides, who can say for certain what was going through that demented pony's head that night? For all we know, the defendant may have a motive beyond our wildest imaginations. What matters, though, is that all of the evidence points to her as the one responsible for this crime. The glitter on her hooves, the fabric roll, the noose itself, and being found at the scene with no chance that any pony else had slipped away unnoticed. All of it points to one simple conclusion. Coco Pamela murdered over all concepts <laughs> in cold blood. Ugh, that angle, it makes me sick to my stomach. <laughs> Which I'm sure is what they were going for. <laughs> Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? Prince Blueblood has presented a very convincing case, even if the motive is somewhat unclear at the moment. I'm afraid if you have nothing further to add, then I will have no choice but to end the trial. This is your last chance, Mr. Wright. Do you have anything else to present to this court to counter the prosecution's claims? <laughs> of course he doesn't. If he did, he would have presented it a long time ago. This is it. If I mess up here, the trial's over. I need to present something that casts significant doubt over Blue Blood's claims. I believe he may have unintentionally given me just the hint I needed. Yeah, Honor, the fabric wasn't I there at have something the to time. To the court at this time. What? How could you possibly? Now, now, Prince Blueblood. Save your surprise for after <laughs> you've seen what it is Mr. Wright has to present. <sighs> Mr. Wright, please present this piece of evidence to the court. Yes, Your Honor. Take that! Is that a torn piece of it was there. Really? That's it? That's your big piece of evidence? It is a big piece evidence? of evidence, bitch. Perhaps not in terms of its physical size, but certainly in the whole ill crate in your argument. Uh, cease your smug little remarks and explain, human. You're the last pony I want to hear that from, Blue Blood. Very well. We found this drip piece of fabric during our investigation of the stage. It was right below the center of the catwalk. I fail to understand how this relates to anything discussed thus far. Well, how about we let the one who requested the fabric explain it to us then? Huh? Me? Playwright, you were the one who asked overall concept to make this fabric, correct? Yes, we needed it for our next play. For your next play? Meaning none of the costumes for the play on the night of the murder used this fabric? That is correct. Where are you going with this, Mr. Wright? It's simple, Your Honor. If the fabric wasn't being used on the night of the crime, then why did we find a piece of it on the stage afterwards? That's a good question. Objection! That piece of fabric could have found its way there at any point. It's impossible for you to prove when exactly it wound up there. Objection! I may not be able to prove the exact time it ended up on stage, but I can definitely prove it was after the play's intermission. Uh, how? Recall playwright's, playwright's testimony. Yeah. He had this to say he went about up there and what looked. was happening on stage during the 15-minute intermission. Well, they had to completely clear the stage of all the props, as well as any debris that would cause problems for the actors on stage, mainly tripping hazards. Yeah. The stage hooves had to clear the stage. No! Yeah. If this piece of fabric had been on stage before intermission, it would have been cleared off by the time the second act had begun. After all, there's no way playwright would have allowed for anything less. Am I right, witness? Absolutely. 
It's out of the question that I would have let the play continue if something like this was still on stage. I mean, it could have distracted the audience or ruined the concentration of one of the performers. So you see, Prince Blue Blood, there's no way this piece of fabric was on the stage before the intermission. Objection! The victim came on stage during the intermission to talk to playwright about the fabric. It's possible he could have accidentally dropped that piece on the stage then, and it simply went unnoticed because the stage had already been cleaned. Objection! Sorry, but that's also impossible. But why is that? Let's go back to playwright's testimony one more time. Come on. He came on stage briefly to discuss something with me, and then he left right before the intermission ended. He said he and his assistant had to start working on coating a new sheet of fabric and paint. If you examine this fabric closely, you'll notice that it's covered in glitter. Not only that, but if we were to turn off the lights in this courtroom, I'm sure you'll realize that it's also covered in fluorescent paint. However, according to Playwright, Overall didn't start covering his fabric in paint until after he had come on stage. God, I'd love to see him upset. What does this mean, Mr. White? This piece of fabric proves two things. The first is that someone brought yeah. it up to the catwalk during the second act of the play. The catwalk? And what ridiculous train of logic are we meant to board to arrive at that conclusion? Well, there's simply no other way for it to have landed on the stage, right? No one could have brought it to the stage directly without being seen. So the only conceivable option must be that it came from above. Fine. And what's the second thing that piece of fabric supposedly proves? Isn't it obvious? It proves that at the theater that night, there existed at least one sheet of overall special fabric that had been completed. That's... Absurd! But... but how was that possible? I thought the police only found one Because the completed one was stolen. Was the incomplete version. Which can only mean that the other sheet was stolen from the theater that night. A third party must have escaped with it! Objection! You are either desperate beyond belief, or have gone completely insane, human attorney. There's no way a third party could exist. <laughs> well then. Why don't you explain what this means then? This piece of fabric clearly proves that... He's just gonna say that Coco was stole... The that Coco was caught there, she couldn't have stolen so it. So why didn't the police find it? Hmm. Simple. The defendant had hidden it... She didn't have time. Time. She must have been planning to steal the one sheet of fabric all along. When overall concepts saw that it was missing, that's when Coco attacked him. I suspect she hid it in a spot where none of us could even find it. Which is why it is still missing, even now. That's impossible. The discovery of a piece of fabric on stage proves that it was out in the open somewhere. The stage was cleared in preparation for Act 2. The fabric must have been taken either on or above the stage during the second act of the play. Otherwise, we wouldn't have this piece with us today. In fact, playwright, I need you to clarify something for me. And what would that be? After the crime occurred, was there someone watching the stage at all times? Yes, there would always be some pony either on or watching the stage. The fabric would have been noticed if it was brought on stage at any given moment. That settles it then. This indicates that the fabric had to have gone up the catwalk once the second act started, which means Coco couldn't have hidden the fabric beforehand. It must have gotten torn somehow, and a piece fell to the stage below. Objection! You've forgotten! But as some pony went up that catwalk with that fabric during the second act, they would have been spotted holding it by playwright or the stage hoops on the right wing of the stage. If that fabric sure was that? in the dark, then it should have been almost impossible to miss. But none of the theater staff have said anything about seeing some pony carrying a glowing sheet of fabric up the catwalk. That is a good point. He's right. Even if you take the stage hoops out of the picture, Playwright definitely would have noticed if the victim had been carrying that fabric. Then I'll propose another theory. Another theory? Playwright said in his testimony he only got a small glimpse of overall running up the stairs. Correct. And what of it? Well, what if there was some pony ahead of overall? 
then Playwright wouldn't have been able to see them. And overall was angry. Angry because he'd just seen this fabric get stolen and was chasing the person who was after it. Who took it. What do you mean? If this third pony exists, then how did Miss Pamel not see them? If she was following Mr. Concept the entire time, there's no way the defendant would have missed this third pony escaping. At the very least, she should have seen them on the catwalk. Yet, has she mentioned such a thing? No. So, how do you explain that, attorney? Actually, it's quite simple. Is it simple? <laughs> this should be good. When I spoke to Miss Pommel, she told me that she had been suffering from memory loss and headaches. I believe it's possible that during the crime, she was knocked unconscious by this third party, and the headaches and memory loss was the side effect from her being knocked unconscious. Do you really expect me to believe the nonsense you're spouting? You do realize that you're speaking for the defendant, right? She's obviously lying to save her own flank. Even if she were hit on the head hard enough to leave a bruise, what makes you think that this incident happened that night and not the day before? And what kind of weapon would this mystery third party have used to knock her out? I demand you show evidence that she was struck on the head that The roll! Emerged. The glitter on the roll! Gladly. She had it in her mane! She had glitter in her mane! Take that. The fabric roll? And how does this prove anything? Before the trial started, we noticed yeah, yeah, that there yeah, was yeah, some yeah, glitter yeah. stuck in her mane. I believe this is the result of being struck by the fabric roll. How would Equestria would that result in glitter getting stuck in her mane? Splinters and wood chips, maybe, but certainly not glitter. Well, as you pointed out, there are traces yeah, of glitter Yeah, exactly, you road. pointed this out! What if some of it ended up in Coco's mane as a result of getting hit with it? Preposterous! The glitter on that roll came from when the defendant held it in her hooves to attack the victim. Oh. Can you prove that that's the exact scenario that caused the glitter to end up on the roll? Well, no. But how else could it have gotten there? Let's stop and think about where this roll came from. The dressing room. I think it's very likely that the roll could have gotten covered in glitter there. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? Here's what I think. Coco and Overall were working in the dressing room prior to the crime. During the course of their work, they must have scattered glitter around the table, where this roll may have been sitting. In fact, yesterday while I investigated the dressing room, I found a can of glitter that clearly showed signs of spillage, sitting right next to the other roll of fabric. After this third party stole the sheet of fabric, they were spotted and ran off. Overall must have grabbed the nearby fabric roll as he gave chase, likely hoping to use it to stop the thief. However, once he reached the top of the catwalk, he tripped and dropped the roll. The thief took advantage of this, and used the roll to knock out both Overall and Coco, who had followed her teacher up the catwalk in pursuit of the thief. That sounds absolutely ludicrous. Does it? Can you deny the possibility? With ease. First off, even if this third party managed to make it all the way up to the catwalk without being spotted by Playwright, how would they have managed to get down without being seen by the stage host in the left wing? Not to mention, if the fabric roll left glitter in Coco's mane, then why didn't it also leave glitter in Overall's mane when he was knocked unconscious? Well, you see, that's... that's... Um... You see, Mr. Wright, your theory makes absolutely no sense. It's inconceivable that a third party could exist, because there's no way they could have escaped without being That's the by stumble point. Or the stage hooves. Uh, he's right. How am I supposed to prove that the third party was able to get away when the left side of the stage was being watched? And I don't even know where to begin with overall's main. Excuse me, if I may interject. Huh? Is there something on your mind, witness? Yes. I'd like to make a confession, Your Honor. A confession? I'd like to amend my statement regarding when I went up to the catwalk. I actually didn't go up immediately. What? Huh? Witness, what are you doing? Please, explain what you mean. It's as I say, Your Honor. I did not go up to the catwalk immediately after seeing the hanging. Before I went up to investigate, I called over my stage hooves from the right wing and my actors from the stage. 
I ordered them to attend to the panicking audience and try to call Someone could have gotten down the right side while that was my happening. Stage manager to inform the police of what happened. After a good five minutes of giving my staff instructions, that was when I decided to go up to the catwalk. Witness! Why didn't you share this time discrepancy earlier? This is crucial information! It's not as if I intentionally wanted to withhold this information. Prince Blue Blood told me not to ah, say it because he said it was irrelevant information. What? Why you? Prince Blue Blood, you knew about this information? Yes, I did, Your Honor. But I did not believe it to be important enough to address. Yeah, right. You withheld this information because you knew it was detrimental to your case. To think I actually blamed Miss Pommel for this heinous Okay, crime. I don't dislike you as much but as I did before. Now it's possible that she's innocent, isn't it? I'll make sure to tell everything that I know from this point on. I promise. As much as I would have appreciated it if you did that from the beginning, I am glad that you are willing to tell us everything this time. Many thanks, Your Honor. Pause break. Because this has been going for 26 minutes. I know I was said I was going to try and get through this this whole scene in this video, but this is a long scene. This scene's probably over an hour, I would guess. Um, so I will be back. Open your eyes, life is all around you. Don't have to be so alone. Take a good look at this world you found and breathe, now you're finally home.